Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I've got yet another product review here on the channel today. It's not actually for any of the products you see out here on the bench. Instead, it's actually the software that I'm going to be using to make this video. This is going to be a review of Cyberlink's new PowerDirector 18 software. It was released in uh, mid-September 2019. I've been actually using Cyberlink software for years, so I'm familiar with their suite. And um, I'm, I was looking forward to this opportunity to actually test out their brand new software to see what improvements they've made. Now, I figured that the best way to review software for making videos is to make a video with it. So I am making this video. I've also been making a, a video about CPU coolers uh, here with the new PowerDirector 18, which will be debuting shortly on the channel. So without further ado, I'm going to actually go right onto my screen and give you a screen capture of my use of PowerDirector 18. And the very first thing you're going to see is this weird setup where PowerDirector fills your media tray with a bunch of random stock photos and videos. And this has been, it's been doing this for years. I don't understand why they do this. Every time you start a new project, you have to go select all those silly images and delete them. So that usually takes 10 seconds. Now I can get into my own project. I'm going to add my own videos, which are going to be part of this CPU cooler review. So you can see those populating now. I'm going to pull one down to start. Uh, actually, before I pull one down, let me, let me show you some of the features that I might apply. Uh, these are the effects. Uh, the, this one that I'm pointing to with the A, that is their pro effect. The rest of these are I've used a bunch of them. They're a little bit hard to know what they do until you actually apply them. So it's almost like you have to experiment with them. There's also these, they're making a big deal of this in the new PowerDirector 18, these callouts and other graphics. Frankly, I think that these look a little bit uh, unprofessional. Uh, I don't really foresee myself using these much in my videos. Then there's also these particle effects. And again, I, I don't know if it's just an example, but I'm never going to use those. They do have a few new text or title effects, and I'm actually going to use this new one. This was not in previous editions. Um, it allows you to kind of animate your text. I'm going to quickly set up an animation here and uh, show you what that looks like. So you can put in your title and it kind of slides into the screen, onto the screen. So I like that, and that is something new. It's a little bit hard to use if you really want to set the position of it. I'm not going to do that now. Instead now is show you how you edit a video track. I've added a track here. I'm going to change the start position. I'm also going to change the end position in a moment. Uh, and I'm also going to show you kind of a bad trait uh, of uh, PowerDirector that's been in, in, in the software for years. If I want to add a new starting position here, I can't actually move it at all until I put its matching end position. Okay, it's like bookmark end. It's really strange here. See how I can now move that? It's been the biggest pet peeve of mine that they haven't fixed this over the many years. Hopefully they'll hear this and just make that change. The other thing I want to show you is one of my favorite features are the transitions. Now the Pro DAD transition is they're really more most professional looking. I'm not sure what that stands for or what if it's some paid service. Obviously they want you to download some other Pro DAD transitions. Um, but this is essentially like a crossfade, which is another, if you actually just drop one uh, video onto another, you can actually do a crossfade, which does something similar. I'm just going to show you a couple of the other transitions. Uh, there are so many here. It's really hard to know what they look like until you try them. Uh, I'll show you one that I've uh, used before and maybe a few others that I've never tried. Here is one uh, called Mosaic. Let's see what it looks like. So that looks pretty silly. That, you know, a lot of these are going to be, well, you'll look at them once, maybe you'll use them once, and then you'll never use them again. Um, most of them really are not that attractive. One that I've liked is called Wipe Center. It's a slightly different effect than the crossfade. All right, so it kind of brings it into view from the center. Um, so there are quite a few options there. Here's your auto levels. I actually do this typically in my audio track, but you can see if I change the slider uh, from left to right, I can increase uh, 
the volume, decrease the volume. Uh, so there's a number of area, ways that you can get into the tools you have for editing video. They're under power tools. I haven't really found a quick access uh, shortcut to this menu. You have to kind of dig through them. Here's your uh, speed uh, tool. So that's very useful if you want to do kind of a fast forward or slow motion. And here's that new audio wipe function that was just added to PowerDirector 18, which is actually sometimes pretty useful. You've got, got the uh, crop zoom pan. I always found the menu's a little bit hard to get into. You notice if I check that, I still have to hit the button over here. Uh, that, that seems kind of duplicative, kind of like this menu needs some work, but they've been using the same menu for a really long time, many, many years. Here's where you can do things like change the aspect ratio, change rotation. I actually do need to rotate this, but I'm not going to do it right this moment. I'm going to actually show you how I put a second track in. So this is a this is a video clip I want to blend in. I can't actually use transitions when uh, it's on a separate track, unfortunately. So uh, I, I actually just use this fade in, fade out feature, which I think is really neat. It's actually one of the best features I've found, and I use it all the time. I do wish I could actually do some of the other transitions with, without actually dragging and dropping that video onto the initial track. So I can show you how that would work in a moment here. But first I wanted to note another problem I have with this interface, which is if I enable fade in, fade out, and then change the length of the video, you actually can no longer enable or disable it. And you actually lose the ability to edit that. That's an interface problem. So there's a, new, a number of interface problems in the software that have not been updated, even with PowerDirector 18. I don't know how old PowerDirector is. It's at least five years old. I bet it's quite a bit older than that. But some of these are really changes they should have made a long time ago. In transitions, they're also the effects, or FX, I guess. You know, I don't use these much. I find that these pictures are really hard to understand. I, I kind of have to try them all out. Um, this is their Pro DAD one, which frankly, I don't see it doing anything. So I don't even know why that's in there. Let me show you some of the others, just as examples of what the effects are. I think some people would use this stuff probably more than I would, um, but they have quite a few. Some of them are labeled as requiring GPU, which I assume means they're uh, you see the NVIDIA symbol there, you know, maybe they're more sophisticated effects. I'm just going to throw a few of these in here so you can kind of see what the effects are. And then I'll run through the video and you can actually see them having an effect. I do have to emphasize that some of these illustrations are, are a little bit hard to understand until you actually apply them. Uh, and, and there's not been an update to this interface, uh, the effects interface and transitions interface in a long time. So here I'm just showing you what some of these effects look like. You'd have to decide if they would be useful for you in your video editing. A couple more, I'm just gonna throw them down here in the effects uh, panel. That's a cool one, I, I really like that one actually. Don't know that I'd ever actually use it, but it looks awesome. The TV simulator, no, I don't have much use for that. You know, some of these are kind of goofy, but you know, I guess they try to give a variety of options depending on what your genre of video is. Maybe something like that x-ray would be useful to you. Again, not so useful to me. That one's just ugly. That doesn't do anything for me. And then let's see what this one is. Sepia tone. Uh, that might be interesting, you know, for some people, again, depending on your genre. Now what I want to get into is actually showing you where it actually performs when it produces video. I am using the hardware acceleration. I have a Core i9 9900K and a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. Pretty heavy hitting hardware. And yet even this, this is not that fast. It's 4K rendering. Um, it's about one to one in terms of the time. And what's odd about it is that I have not found that it's actually much faster. I'm going to actually show you the hardware load here, you can see my GPU is it's about 30%. I'm going to cancel that and do the same render without hardware acceleration. And I don't know that it's actually going to be that much slower, still kind of one to one. The video card is not being used quite as much. Now it's ramping up a little hard to say uh, if it's, you know, you know, it's not being used quite as much. 
but it, it, the difference is is subtle. Um, I would have expected hardware acceleration to maybe have the time for rendering, but it really it doesn't. So 4K rendering is about one to one, which is pretty slow. What do you think of this software? Well, conveniently, I can show you right here. I give it four out of five stars, mostly because it is powerful and it's pretty affordable. Um, I would love this interface to get a complete overhaul. They've been adding features, but it still looks really dated, uh, many years old. I'd like bigger icons, I'd like more color, I'd like less buried in submenus. The other big issue here is like many other manufacturers like uh, Adobe and Microsoft, Cyberlink is clearly going towards the subscription model. I see on their website, they're not really advertising PowerDirector 18 at all. They're uh, advertising PowerDirector 365. And PowerDirector 18 is just the latest update you'd get with that subscription. You really have to drill down to actually see the prices. So I'm going to click here, see all plans on pricing. You can see PowerDirector 18 Ultra and Ultimate for $100 and $130. And then they're really pushing the subscription models at $52 a year, uh, including their bundle, the Director Suite. You know, $52 a year sounds okay until you start realizing, well, I'm going to have to pay that every year. And I'm just going to get potentially the same software each year. Uh, versus buying the entire product and, and owning it forever. And given how slowly PowerDirector has evolved over the years, I'd be nervous about having to pay them $52 a year for this software. I think as it is, I, like I said, four out of five stars, but if it's subscription only, my rating would be a lot lower. If you like this video and this review, please do like and subscribe. I'm Ari from Tech Buyers Guru, and I'll catch you next time.